Okay, so hey guys, welcome to part 7 of the PSL Minardi Manager Career Mode, where we try to take Minardi to the top, well, to be the best team around. And as you can see here on the screen, we, we're going to be able to do that, because we have just signed our chief designer, Neil Oatley. In fact, actually, we arranged this contract back in January, but you know, I'm, I'm announcing it now, and here we are, Neil Oatley. He's a brilliant designer, he was with McLaren, and he is with McLaren until the end of this season and then he'll be with us next season so what will he be doing he'll be designing the aero parts front wings rear wings barge board suspension and the side pods also a crucial role in his job is designing the chassis and his chassis skill as you can see here on this screen is a hundred research skill 99 morale's a hundred with his overall rating 99 being the joint highest chief design he can get so as you can see of his chassis skill being a hundred, that means he'll be able to design a brilliant chassis, not in time for the 2000 season, but in time for the 2001 season, which means with his aero parts he's going to be producing from 2000 onwards, and the chassis will be getting from 2001 onwards. We should be in safe hands that we'll have a good base car to work with here, and I think that the skills of Neil Oatley will be able to push Minardi into good times. But anyway, so that's Neil Oatley, that's our first contract we have announced really. We still got technical directors, commercial managers, um, our two drivers and our test driver, and then our supplies contracts, which I think technical director will be next episode, commercial manager the one after that. Those three drivers will all be in a go, in one go, and then suppliers are, well, 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 we'll see as it comes, but technical director will be next episode properly. Well, I'll be announcing something next episode anyway. But anyway, so we've announced our desire for next year and obviously that's, you know, good news for us, you know, how we've got such a good, how we've got such a good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, I mean, that's, it's, well, I mean, it's good, you know, how we got such a good, well-known designer and obviously he's done well for McLaren. Um, so hopefully he can bring some of the clamor's dominance to us. But anyway, we'll get off of Neil Oatley now, because we've got to stick with Gabriel Tredozzi for the time being. And even more short term is the next race, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, which is my favourite track in F1. Probably ever, but definitely currently my favourite track in F1. And as you can see, race lap record is in 98 this time. Not 97, by Michael Schumacher with a 119.3. So, obviously it's now a high speed track, which shouldn't favour us with our terrible 4 z Tech engine, but we did well in Catalonia, and that's a somewhat high speed track. So, you never know, we might, we might do well in this one as well. And that race is on the 11th of June, which is in two weeks time. So, we're going to see if there's any news, and if there's not, then we'll be at the practice report around Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. So see you then. Okay, so we, so hey guys, so we have got some new news. Just one bit of news, and it's that Prost are using Talic Tag Electronics. They were rumoured to be, and now they are, so that's it. Pretty boring week. Oh, but obviously, we're, we, no, okay, what's happened is we've just lost 2.1 million. That's in, obviously, wages and contracts. Um, obviously wages for the assistant personnel we got and obviously contracts for the bigger name personnel and the suppliers so we're still at six million it's like we're in debt or not it's like we're in minus money so we got just got more weekly reports here so yeah I'll cut to see if we got any more news or to the practice report around Canada so I'll see you then okay so hey guys so we have got some new news actually we got I've had a quick look for it, and it's very interesting, actually. So, f first interesting one, BAR confirms Mark Smith. Now, he is currently at Jordan, I believe. I think he's at Jordan at the minute, but yeah. So, BAR are now getting Mark Smith as their chief designer. Obviously, we've announced our chief designer. And Neil Oatley is better than Mark Smith, but Mark Smith is still a pretty good chief designer. And new components still for Jordan. This is... They could be using Brembo brakes now. I don't know which ones they are using currently, but 
chances are they're better than Brembo's because, well, Brembo's are terrible. End of, really. Um, David Coulthard is linked to going to Benetton, which would be very interesting, actually. I see. He is kind. Of, he is definitely the second man at McLaren. He always has been the second man to Hackenden. But moving down from such a top team like McLaren to Benetton, I don't know. It'd be a good. It'd probably be a good um, deal for Benetton. I don't know about David. Poor old David. Wait, wait. Ferrari confirms Nick Worth. I have no idea who he is. Apparently, he's a chief designer, which means they've got rid of their chief designer. Because their chief designer, I believe is Rory Brin. So I don't know what's happened to him, because this guy, well judging by how little he's being paid, he's not going to be very good. And now they got with Rory Brin, who was the joint best designer. I think this is going to really wound for our, to be honest, but I guess they'll still have Rory Brin's design chassis for next year. Um, and Benetton are also linked to using Ford Z-Tech engines, which would be suicide. Why, why would you? I know McLaren have confirmed it, and Jordan have confirmed Ford Z Tech engines, but we're using them and they're terrible. But that'd be that'd be another fairly big team who would go down if they use Ford Z Tech engines. Don't know which ones they use at the minute, but they're better. Um, statement from Williams, what's this? Um, Ralph Schumacher, there we go. So they're keeping Ralph Schumacher um, as their second driver, which is stupid. Um, because Ralph can't finish the race. I know half the race he hasn't finished this season. I have been due to car errors, but I mean he's Ralph Schumacher, he's I don't really trust him. I wouldn't anyway, but well their problem not me. Um not mine. But yeah, then Ben and Tomo going for Brembo breaks, which I've always said would be stupid. Pros confirm Ekrim Sammy as their commercial manager. Who I don't know who he's with, he might be with McLaren at the minute. I honestly don't know. And then McLaren confirms Andy LaFleming, who's their chief designer. Yes, obviously, because we have arranged a range of contract with Neil Oatley, which means he can't be with McLaren next year, so McLaren have got Andy LaFleming. Um, I don't know who he is, but again, judging by how um, low his salary is, I don't think he's that good. Then Benetton have confirmed David Coulthard. As their driver number one, so who's going to be driver number two at McLaren? I don't know. I honestly don't know who driver number two is going to be. But actually, they haven't even confirmed whether Hackenham will be staying as well. There's a lot of secrecy going on at McLaren, to be honest. Before I have confirmed Adrian Nuri as their technical director for next year, which means we haven't got Adrian Nuri, so that's something I can confirm. Obviously, we haven't got Adrian Nuri next year. But it also means Adrian Nuri's leaving McLaren. Going, and going with their arch rivals Ferrari, which, for, well, Ferrari, which is very interesting move from Adriano, but obviously, as we've seen with, well, what he's done to Red Bull in recent years, he is a top designer. Not just Red Bull, but he's done lots of other great projects in F1 in the past, so it'd be very interesting. And then Arrow's confirmed Mark Genet. Now, I have hinted, saying that we're not going to retain our drivers, and... I can confirm here, our second driver, Mark Genet, won't be staying with us. I can't confirm who's replacing him, but he's going to our arch rivals, Arrows, and to us. If Arrows are going to arrange deals like that, are you know, arrange deals with such low-key, low-skill personnel, then I don't think we have to worry about them next year, because I know we've got some good people lined up. I've announced one of them, but, you know... We've got some good drivers next year, but yeah, Stuart might be using Ford Z Tech engines. Be the stupidest move in the world that'd be. Um, Takaki, see, after his two points, he has just skyrocketed. Apparently, he's linked with Williams. I mean, Takaki's not a good driver. I've said it many a time, but neither Zanardi, who they and they've got him at the minute, so. Takaki must be better than Zanardi, because Zanardi hasn't really proved himself this season. But Clay Takaki, those two points he got in Imola have really helped to, you know, link up big teams, you know, get his name out there. And Benetton have confirmed Brembo breaks. Which is stupid. I don't know which ones they're currently using, but why would you go for such terrible breaks? 
And there's a lot of interesting news there, actually. This might be a long episode. Oh, yeah, and we got the email from Mark Jenna confirming they has decided to accept um, a position elsewhere, so he'll be leaving us at the end of the season. Which... No big loss. I know who our second driver is next year, and he is... He's better than Jeanne, and his name's more well known than Jay's. But anyway, we've got the second model of side pods that Gabriel Tredozzi has signed there, and the second model of suspension. So it's good to see that finally they've produced a second model of that. So obviously, we are finally look. We got 45 of the old suspension units because it's taken them that long to design new ones. Hopefully, obviously, with Neil Oatley next year, should take a lot less time, to, you know, in terms of research, which is, he's rated 99 in. Hopefully, um, it'll be able to, um, hopefully it'll take him less time to research the, and, um, develop these new parts. Because Gabriel Trudeau, it's taken him a long time to design his suspension and barge, or, no, suspension and side pods. But, oh well. We've got one done, and um, we've got them done now, so hopefully they can produce a second model of each one in time for the next race, which is in four days' time. So, we'll see if there's any more news, and if there isn't, then I'll cut to the practice report around the circuit, you'll feel nerve. So I'll see you then. Okay, so we have got some new news, guys, and just the interesting news has been flooding in this episode, really. It's ours confirmed Andrew Tilly. I don't know, he's a chief designer apparently. Um, doesn't really look very good, but. There you go, they've got Andrew Tilly. <laughs> uh, well, what, what can I say really? They've got him, he's probably not very good. So I'm not very really worried. Um, and then Stuart GP confirm Leo Ress as their technical director. Never heard of him. Again, low salary, so compared to our personnel next year. Don't think we've got to worry about Stuart next year. AP Racing, which is joint best brakes you can get. Um, Arrows might be using them next year. Again, I, I, I don't know which I don't know which um, brakes they're using them. In. I don't know which team uses any um, which brakes really. Don't know any of them, but they might be using them, which might be a good upgrade for them if they're using Brembo's at the minute. Um, Magneti Morelli Williams might be using those electronics, which obviously are the best. Um, you can get, which would be a good purchase for them after, the, you know, they've just got Ralph Schumacher, which... <sighs> but another thing Williams have done is they have signed Takaki, and as driver number one, so Ralph, I mean, I know I'd take the mick out of Ralph, but Williams seriously reckoned that Takaki, even though he got two points in Imola, which was a fluke, and he had amazing practice and qualifyings in Monaco, but they seriously reckon he's better than Ralph Schumacher. They're not paying him more than Ralph Schumacher. They're paying him not even a tenth of what Ralph Schumacher's getting, but he's driver number one. <sighs> Which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Why Takaki would be driver number one. Is that... I thought if he's going to join Williams, he'd be driver number two, but again, we've got better drivers next year, so... And Stuart might be using Peugeot engines, which is just interesting but anyway so that's the end of the news there's been a lot this episode i think it's gonna be a long episode um, this one is which i apologize for as always i think the episodes are too long anyway so having a long one's well i can't really do a lot to be honest but anyway here we got we got something we can look forward to it circuit chill villeneuve my favorite track in f1 it's, it's it's just such a brilliant track i absolutely love it um and hopefully Despite obviously our lacking straight line speed, with those extra suspension and side pods, with better aerodynamics to help get down these straights and hopefully just maybe claw some points back off the arrows. But anyway, I'll cut to the practice report around Circuit Shield Villeneuve. So I'll see you then. Okay, so we just had to practice around Canada in 1999, so let's have a look at the results. Michael Schumacher takes first with a lap time of 1.24 dead to be ahead of both McLarens of David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen, who take second and third respectively. 
Eddie Irvine gets 4th in the other Ferrari, finishing way behind his teammate with a lap time just shy of 2 seconds slower, with Damon Hill taking 5th in the Jordan and Heinz Harold Frentzen rounding out the points positions in 6th. Johnny Herbert takes 7th with Ralph Schumacher and Zanardi taking 8th and 9th for Williams, Rose Barrichello is 10th with Wirtz in 11th, Jack Villeneuve is in 12th, Elysian and Trulia 13th and 14th, Ricardo Zonta is in 15th with Pedro Diniz in the Sauber in 16th, Olivier Panis in 17th with Giancarlo Fisichello in the Benetton, finishing surprisingly low down to be the last of the non backmarker teams in 18th. Marc Genet is in 19th and he's ahead of his teammate despite the fact that Genet had limited running after an engine failure while out in practice. Luca Badoa wasn't able to capitalise on the extra track time by finishing two tenths behind his teammate, with De La Rosa finishing in 21st, with Takaki finishing way behind his teammate to be in 22nd and at the back of practice as per usual this season. Okay, so we just had the qualifying around Canada in 1999, so let's have a look at the results. Michael Schumacher took first with a 121.9, which is a considerable amount faster than the McLarens, of which Mika Hakkinen took second, with David Coulthard being almost two seconds behind Michael Schumacher. Eddie Irvine, Schumacher's teammate, was behind Schumacher considerably to be in fourth, with Heinz Al Frentzen and Damon Hill taking fifth and sixth in the Jordans. Bruins Barrichello is able to take 7th with Fisichello in 8th, Ralph Schumacher is in 9th while Herbert's in 10th, Wurtz and Zanardi lock out the 6th row, Villeneuve and Zonta lock out the 7th row for BAR, Sean Alacy is in 15th with Trulli in 16th, Pedro Diniz is in 17th with Olivier Panis in 18th to be the last of the non backmarker teams. Of those backmarker teams, Marc Genet was leading the pack, saying a lap time 1.5 seconds slower than Olivier Panis, but good enough to beat his teammate Luca Padoa, who was in 20th, who set a lap time only 2 tenths slower. Then we go back to 21st where we got Takaki. The future Williams man wasn't on form today to set a lap time 2 seconds slower than the Minardis. De La Rosa then set a lap time 1.3 seconds slower than his teammate to be firmly at the back of the field. Okay, so hey guys, so there's a few interesting things I have found um, while looking at the strategy. Um, first is that we got 69 laps for this race, which good good amount. Um, and second of all, Luca Badoa used an average of 3.5 litres of fuel a lap, whereas Genet was only using 2.93, which means even though he's going more laps um, on his fuel load, he doesn't need as much as Padoa, which is pretty interesting. I mean... So Padova's not even he was, not even faster than Genet and yet he still uses more fuel. I suppose like actually twenty fourteen season, the one just gone, I mean Hamilton was usually faster than Rosberg and Hamilton um usually used more uh, less fuel rather than Rosberg, so it's possible, but it's just very weird. But anyway, so set up we've got remember um obviously after practice where Genet had his engine failure, which really wasn't ideal. Um, got fit, fresh parts on all of the cars now. Obviously, and now they're going to be using the new side pods and suspension, which were designed, um, which we, they weren't using during practice or qualifying, because that's how I like to rotate the parts. So they're fresh to the race, which means they got a low chance of failing. And you know, the only way we're going to score points is if we don't retire and or everyone else does. But anyway, so let's head out to the race. So is there going to be another crazy start this race? I reckon there will be because this is F1 manager after all so we do get some crazy stuff happening and okay so the commentator just said it's go 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 um, and then there's the delay before we actually went. Okay, so let's actually see some action. Fizzy Keller going around the first corner Taking a very weird line, but um, he's up and it says 17th on the graphic. He's obviously not in 17th. That's just a glitch on the game's part. He's probably more like in 8th. Um, yeah, because he's just behind the Jordans. And the TV camera don't really want to show us, which I suppose is fair enough. 
Why would you want to look at Minardi when you can look at Hacken and chasing down Schumacher? That's what you want to see. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I am mean, it's quite surprising that Schumacher actually out-qualified Hacken. I think Schumacher was a holds the lap record around here in 98, didn't he set that? He, so yeah, he holds a lap record. So, race lap record at least. Um, at this time, and is that a Jordan? No. I suppose you know you gotta be careful. You don't want to take out your teammate on the first lap because you know that's that has caused controversy in the past or even the recent past. And is he gonna make a move? Oh, he's he thought about it. He thought about that. Damon Hill did, and oh, he almost got taken by the um, overtaken by the Stewart there, but. You know, Jordans are doing a good job to try and be the best of the rest. And what's this? Is this uh, De La Rosa getting past Takaki? God, they're so far behind us already. Look at them. If you can see from that TV camera, there's no one else even near them. Okay, so getting the replay again. Is De La Rosa going to get past? Has he? He has a swirl, actually. De La Rosa has got past Ikaki. Um, but they're so far behind us. Both both hours are. They're both so far behind us already. We've only done a lap. Well, we haven't even done a lap. Us back market teams haven't. And they're so far behind us already. Is you know, I mean, I've both. I swear we were pretty equal at the start of the year, and now we're not. As it turns out. Oh, it doesn't matter, because in the subsequent years, assuming I don't get sacked um, by Minardi, trust me, next year, and definitely 2001, <laughs> the battles with Arrows would be things of the past, unless Arrows make some good contracts, uh, negotiations, and we've done the first lap. Got a bit distracted there, but we're going to fast forward on and see, crucially, if we can get any points this race. Obviously, we got to get up into 6th, so we're hoping for 13 retirements, obviously, with Genet being in 19th. Um, but yeah, we are over a tenth of the way through a race. Well, now we are. Um, and there's been no retirements. But both hours have already been lapped. Twice, it says. I mean, that's just an error on the game's part, obviously. It's not realistic for an hour to be lapped twice before 10 laps. Oh, an hour are considerably slower than... McLaren's, but I'm pretty certain they wouldn't have been lapped twice in 10 laps. I'm pretty certain of it. Also, the weird thing is why Takaki's now ahead of De La Rosa, or well, faster than De La Rosa. I know Takaki's been confirmed as no number one driver at, Arrow, um, at Williams next year, which is crazy. Raul Schumacher! Oh, way you've retired again. First one to retire. Just... But the, f the amount of these which have been mechanical failures. I'm wondering whether it is actually Schumacher's fault or whether he is terrible just like well I don't think he's terrible I just think he just um is reckless and Padoa you've dropped down a bit hopefully that's a pit stop that was a pit stop good because he's jumped right back up again but we're still hoping for another 12 retirements and judging by the fact we've only had one I don't think we're gonna get up there, we just have had Zonta retire in the BAR with bargeable failure. But, I don't think we're going to be up there in the points. Unless we get mass retirements all in one go like we had last race. Don't think it's going to happen this race. Yeah, last race was quite crazy with retirements around that 40 odd, so you never know, we might see that again. But, you know, Jeanne in 17th, that's way off the points. And I'm at Benetton. Oh, Fezzi Fez Keller in the Benetton's actually looking like he's going to get points. Because he's got past Damon Hill. I thought, I mean, I thought Jordan's were the best of the rest, but it's looking like they're not. And look, we're a lap ahead of both Arrows drivers. Or two laps ahead of De La Rosa. That's just, that's just how bad they are. They really are terrible. Both Arrows cars. It's, it's unbelievable, really. And you know what? This looks like this has been a boring race. I mean, Diniz has just um, retired due to another suspension failure. Which is good because obviously I don't want the Salvers to score points. Where is the other Salvers? He's in 12th. I don't think Sean Lacey's going to get any points. And then we're behind Yana Trulli's next guy. Just Yana Trulli who actually is, I believe, a former Minardi driver. 
And I've just seen that De La Rosa's had a driver error retirement. I mean, it's because he's not a very good driver. But yeah, I mean, Arrows are he, unlikely to be scoring points now, especially as only one driver's in it. But then again, the, dri the only driver who has scored points to them this season so far is still in it. But we ain't going to score any points either. Um, Damon Hill's just had a driving error. God, no, not a good driver like Damon Hill. But that's not going to put us anywhere near the points. And now Fizzy Keller's crashed out due to driver error as well. And Verts. And, no, Verts has got a barge failure. Oh, my. What? What is happening in these last few laps? We're almost out of points. We're almost in the points. Oh, my God. That was the... Cr I've never seen anything like it. Look from... We so nearly jumped into the points end. That would have been an interesting few laps to watch there. So, look. Let's just look. Damon Hill, driver error. Verts, driver... Hang on. Verts is barge boards. Fizzy Keller, driver error. Truly, farmer, former Minardi driver himself. Um, Tyres. Stewart, well... Johnny Herbert, driver error. Frentzen suspension. Schumacher with a driver error with two laps before the end. And then cool, and then cool fire suspension failure. But we were so nearly in the points then. I'm telling you, I'll tell you now. Jean Alesi, Sauber got points and so BAR. So the only team to not score points yet is Prost. We, we we really need to score some points by the end of the season if if all we're relying on is that Prost don't score any points we've had it obviously to come 10th in the constructors but look at that that was crazy we jumped up from being about 15th to 8th in no time because of all those mass retirements that's one of the craziest races of, a, of ends of a race I've ever seen in this game but, yeah, Hacken has won. We're quite lucky, actually, that Schumacher retired near the end. I don't know whether Schumacher was winning. I wasn't really paying attention to the top. But, yeah, Eddie Irvine second. Good finish for the second for I man, I suppose. Uh, Brunsberg, Kelly gets third. Zanardi, the unlucky man, finally um, gets some luck to get fourth. Sean Lacey, unfortunately, in the Salve gets, sit, uh, gets fifth. And then Jacques Villeneuve, unfortunately, in the BAR, um, gets sixth. Um, and Takaki did, did finish. Takaki did actually finish the race. Unlike his teammate, that's that was a crazy into a race. God, no, I think I need to lie down after that. That was. We got so excited then. I thought we were gonna sneak into the points. But don't matter. We got another nine, ten races before the end of the season. So hopefully we can just sneak into the points by then. Uh, McLaren went at Canada, yes, Hacken did. Actually, Hacken was quite a way behind in the Drivers' Championship, but obviously with him winning and Schumacher retiring, hope that should mean actually for Hacken and that, that he's actually, in terms of the Drivers, actually winning. Yes, he is. By four points, actually. Well, Hacken's finally getting somewhere, then. Yeah, he's finally getting somewhere then, so he might actually win the Drivers' Championship this year. And then look at the Constructors. Yep. Currently we're 10th. But, I've got to rely on Prost. Not so basically, assuming we don't score any points for the rest of the season, to keep my job, I've got to hope that Prost don't get any points. And I wouldn't bet on that. I think Prost probably will get some points. Um, what am I rating then? Yeah, Ferrari, Jean Todd's highest rated manager, Paul Stewart. But Tom Walkinshaw in the Arrows has got quite a high driver rate, uh, manager rating there. It's probably because he's offloaded um, to Kaki, to Williams, that's probably why. I mean, that deserves recognition in itself, really. Wow. Um, anyway, so that's that was a crazy end to the race. I'm just going to read through these emails. Um, commercial manager. So yeah, so let's have a look. Gustav Brunner. Yeah, both the cars, worn parts that he would do. Um, 
McLaren and Ferrari are duelling for most events parts, which well, they would, wouldn't they? Of course they would in this time. And yeah, we got 1.92 million from sponsorship and merchandise. But that was a crazy race. Um, and now here's an interesting thing. We got a test day at Magni Cores just before the race. So it might actually be worth going to this test day because... Well, because obviously, because we can get a good setup on the test day before we go to... Well, before we start the championship. Well, before we do the next round of the championship. And same for Great Britain, actually, because that's the test day just before the race. That might actually... Both of those test days might be worth going to, because you get a decent setup for the race before. I probably won't bother... But if I do, I'll, I'll mention it, but I won't be showing it. But we have Magni Cores, I don't really like that track, to be honest. Never have. But the lap record is by Nigel Mansell, which is... Well, I mean, it's not weird There's Nigel Mansell, it's weird, obviously, his era, 92. Apparently, I don't know whether Magni Cores just hasn't been on the calendar since 92. But it's weird how there hasn't been a fast lap time since 92, but... Uh, Almost certainly, um, cars will be beating that lap record next race. You know, even Minardi, even we might actually beat that race lap record next race. Um, yeah, it's on the 25th of June, two weeks' time. Where I'll, I'll promise next episode I'll be announcing my new technical director. Because um, I'll, I'll give you a little clue, Gustav Brunner is going. Yeah, Gustav Bruno is going, and now you've got to guess who it is that's replacing him. Now, you know it isn't going to be Adrian Newey, because he has been confirmed to be going with Ferrari next year. So, who do you reckon it's going to be? If it's not really Adrian Newey, then who do you reckon it is? You can leave that down in the comments if you want, and yeah, leave your comments down about the race, whether you thought it was an interesting race or an interesting episode, or any of the news that's come about, you know, just the news we had earlier on this episode, which some of it was crazy, um, yeah, leave your comments down about, about your opinions on anything this episode, all about the series so far, um, and I'll see you next time, where we're going to be announcing our new technical director, and we're going to be having the race around Magni Cores, which, uh, not a great track, but oh well, I'll see you in Magni Cores, for the next episode. So I'll see you then.